Hey, welcome to my Friday afternoon. I am off of work. The suit and tie came off. The Palmero shirt came on, went on, and my New York Central Lines baseball cap went on. Now you notice I'm wearing it like this. I got one ear partially covered because, yeah, that's how we roll in SoCal, yo. Anyway, I am making a trip into Topanga Canyon and it's about 12 miles away where I'm going, uh, but it's going to take about an hour to get there. Welcome to SoCal traffic. Now, this episode, I'm trying to time my stop at the light up here uh, because I need to keep my hands on the wheel because I'm uh, definitely a very safe driver, definitely a safe driver. And um, anyway, this episode is called Relic Hunting. And speaking of relics, you need, if you don't have it already, I've told you this before, but some of y'all don't listen. Get the album Benton County Relic by, well, what do you know? Look what I have right there look at that by yeah Cedric Burnside isn't that cool anyway I am going to go out and get something to put into a guitar and I am joined by camera person extraordinaire Kendra who is just so very very excited to be joining me on this trip today Anyway, I got the go cam rolling because usually if I'm by myself, I can talk to myself, but I don't want Kendra thinking that I'm going crazy talking to myself. So she starts rubbing her hands together to get that wheel money any faster than she can waste it already. Anyway, um, how this story started was I typically like to put stuff in my theme guitars or pieces of stuff that has some significance. My favorite thing to do is actually go to a site where somebody has been recorded or something happened and get some physical memento, like maybe a piece of wood that I can make a plug out of and put in the guitar and like a neck out or something like that. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're going to this place uh, that not very many people know about or know the story behind it to get preferably a piece of wood from uh, a dead tree. Now, I'm an arborist, which is a fancy word for tree guy. And um, I don't go in wounding trees and, and, and making trees look like Richard Nixon and you know some of the things people do to trees. But... Um, I'm going to be looking for a piece of a tree that was around in about the late 60s, early 70s. That's the time frame I want. There's something significant about this site from that time frame. Now this story actually starts in the 1920s um, where there was a guy that was preaching um, and he was pretty young preacher but he was talking about this other person in town who was playing guitar with a um, a glass slide and we all know what that is this person was saying that this is a devil's music that slide makes it sound like the devil's screeching or something like that so uh, he basically preached the guy out of town which is gonna cause me to track a piece of relic from that guy out of Ridgecrest, California, which oddly enough, I was gonna go up there and make that trip to get something from a site in Ridgecrest, California. Uh, but there was a like a big earthquake and it was rattling our house 100 miles away, the windows were shaking. So I didn't make the trip that time, not because I didn't want to, but my family actually was feigning concern for me which is actually them 
trying to make sure I keep working, keep that paycheck coming into the house. Right, Kendra? Yeah, right. Anyway, fast forward. The guy that was preaching against the other guy after the other guy left town, he started playing guitar and doing the same thing. And he became somebody that uh, influenced a lot of the people that we all know about the crossroads and that kind of thing. But uh, this person was recorded several times uh, by Alan Lomax and then um, some time went by, disappeared. Now I'm gonna be making a guitar themed after this person. And you know, if you're deep into blues history, you probably already know who I'm talking about. But if you don't, I'm gonna let you struggle and figure it out when the episode comes around where I put all these relics and pieces together because I got quite a few uh, that's going to give you some hints. Um, anyway, so this person dropped off the face of the earth basically. No one knew where, where he went and then some record collectors in the early 60s started listening to these old blues records, these Paramount records and uh, the Library of Congress recordings and they figured out some of these people were still alive. Well, one of the people uh, they found up in New York and they got him a guitar and he couldn't hardly play it. He didn't even really remember his own songs. So they brought in a um, a kid that had been listening to records and this kid was uh, pretty smart in a way that he could listen to someone's playing pattern and then describe it to you kind of in the way we would tell somebody how to get to your house. So you go, you make three laughs and then a right. He was able to describe music like that, um, which is very interesting. But anyway, they brought this kid in and he basically taught this old man how to play his own music, relearn his own music. Um, anyway, the uh, old man went on to play quite a few gigs and festivals before he died in the 80s. Uh, the kid himself ended up being in a band with a couple songs we all know. Again, if you can figure this out, I'm gonna, there's a lot of hints going on here. Um, but the place we're going to today uh, the young man, after he had a couple of successful years with, with a band of his own and that he played a big part in, ended up dying on this property in kind of an under odd circumstances. So, that said, I got about another half hour to drive or so and I'm not just going to babble on because Kendra's about had enough already. Um, but we'll set up the camera once we get there. All right, we are here. Nice big old oak trees. That one was here the time that we're looking for. There's a lot of brush down in the stream. And there is a big old walkway here that looks pretty rough. There is more colors in the graffiti on this place than a Woodstock poster, but this is it. All right, what an adventure. We're down in the stream bed. And um, that's not good. I don't want to step in that. You always got to look for snakes in California, that's for sure. But, yeah, here it is. Here's our destination. Very interesting. Now, I want to find a piece of good solid wood, one that I'm not going to uh, get rattlesnakes. 
with. All right, from being an arborist, I know that that right there is a piece of oak. Oh, and I'm right here next to this house. So, I'm gonna grab that one up. Look, there's an old barbell here, isn't that funny? But there's what I'm at. All right, there we go, nice piece of oak. I can tell by the grain and the texture of the wood, that's what it is. I can take this to the shop and make quite a few plugs and stuff out of it. And I'll show you how to do that when we get here. You know, just for the interest of it, I'm going to cut a piece of this post off. I just happen to have this saw with me and take that with me as well. All right, there we go. Piece of oak and a piece of post from the ruins of this, whatever this place was. And, uh, You'll be able to find where I was if you can find the southeast corner of the house and find that. All right, guys, welcome to the great outdoors. I got the uh, block of wood at home or the the old log here, uh, not to be confused with Bob log, one, two, three. Um, but I took this handy saw I got here. Let me check the camera angle. Yeah, good. Um, I cut the end of the log off because it's it's checkered and split, and um, got down to the good wood here. But a couple cut a couple of slices, one like this. And I cut them this thick for a reason. Now, um, what I'm going to be able to do is, let me show you a couple other things. I got some plug cutters here that you just basically cut into a piece of wood. And it pulls a, it pulls a plug out of the wood. It actually gives you a plug or a kind of like a dowel. Um, and I've got one that's a quarter inch and um, this is not a quarter inch here this part is a quarter inch so it cuts quarter inch plugs and you can tell because I got a quarter inch Forstner bit and it fits right in there you see so what you do basically is you take a piece of wood and you take your plug cutter and you just drill in like that and it will pull a, a perfect piece of plug out for you that you can use for something else. Now don't let it annoy you that this hole is bigger than the quarter inch plug. Um, how big is it? Well, for all you metric haters, it's about, look at that, about 10 millimeters. Imagine that. Oh, one more thing. This wood is kind of light colored, you can see that. And so I stopped on the way back from this place, and in fact it was on the same road. They have these fruit stands, they have these awesome cherries like this one. Um, you know what a cherry is, right? Well, inside these cherries, mm, this stuff stains anything, right? So inside there's these pits, and you don't get all the cherry meat off of it. How big are the pits? Well, let me see here. They're about seven millimeters. You could extrapolate this to be, it's about seven millimeters between your string spacing, between each string on a four string. So you could use this instead of a ruler, which would be almost as antiquated as using inches. So anyway, I ate a few of these cherries, more like a few hundred, and I put a couple of them with the pits into some vodka. Now, why do I use vodka? Well, I don't drink, but I have it around because it has this knack of pulling 
the extracts or essence out of plant material. How do I know that? Because I'm a world-renowned arborist, so wearing bibs. Anyway, I like these old mason jars, and I like this. You see this lid here? I like this because it threads onto a mason jar. It's got a slot here that opens and closes. That's for a straw. Keeps the flies out of the picnic. But anyway, I can just strain what I've done here. I can't see the camera angle. You see that? That is some really dark stuff that will stain just about anything. So, if I put a piece of plug that I've cut in here and leave it soak, it's going to stain it a really cool color. So if I soak a piece of wood in here overnight in this extract, I get this color. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's going to help give the dowel I'm going to use to put in the guitar, I'm going to use it on an accent. So, um, and I'm, again, these cherries came off of the road where I got this wood and the leg bone is connected to the, uh, anyway, I'll figure that out. So hey, before I go in the shop, I decided I'm going to cut this out here. Why leave wood uh, dust in the shop when you can leave it outside? Oh, by the way, you can see that there's been borers in this tree right there. See that? Don't worry, I won't charge you a consultation fee for that. But anyway, let me get back here and you just start off. There we go and it is in here look at that that's what it's gonna look like perfect and I also got this piece of post um, which is pretty good as well and I've cut a piece of it off on a chop saw like so and let's see what this looks like again I'm gonna use the quarter inch come out here you know what I'll just go in here where it's a little bit denser. Hey, that's a cool donkey in the background, right? All right. By the way, these bits are hot. Very hot. But look at that. Now, I can take my quarter inch Forstner bit after I've let this soak up and drill a hole into whatever I want. And then I just glue this in like so. So it's a little hot in the shop, so what we're going to do is uh, take advantage of the afternoon sun and, and put this in our uh, vodka Topanga Canyon Road uh, cherry stain. And we'll let that soak for the afternoon. See you in the shop. All right, guys, let's get the bench cleaned off, give you a little look at what I got going on. Check this one out. I just found this at a place called... <laughs> you think I'm going to tell you? <laughs> anyway, I'll give, if, give you a shout out at the end or a link down below. If you're one of those people that actually watches my videos to the end, you might want to do that this time. Anyway, look at this one. I got my 141st DUIY, DUI, I guess, 1963, California. Hey, this one is going to somebody in England. I guess it's England, UK, uh, somewhere like that. I'm going to give you a shout out to those people in a future video. But this is being built out for that license plate guitar. So let's get that out of the way here. Kind of recap what we've done. What we're doing right now is we're kind of waiting for this to get stained up, this plug to get stained up. Let me get it out of here and have a look. You see these? That comes in pretty handy. What did you think these things were for? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside right now. So, uh, for those of you that might have short-term memory loss from one thing or another, I'm not sure. Um, 
recap here. We took a quarter inch plug cutter, um, cut one of these out of a log that we found at the location. We stained the plug that we cut out of there with uh, some dye made out of cherries that we bought from a roadside stand just up the road from where we found stuff. We dyed that. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple plugs out of this and um, who knows you might actually have one of these show up in your mailbox but one more time it's pretty simple there it is right into the die I'm gonna cut a few of these now okay I'm burning through these pretty quick now you want to make sure that when you're popping these out, if you're cutting a bunch of these like I am. Um, oh, one more thing. I try to cut on the, see where that line splits there? That's the annual growth ring. There's some tension and stuff that's actually better if you cut on that line than if you were to cut on a bigger piece of wood where the lines were more spread apart. So, again, no consultation fee for that arboricultural knowledge I just gave you which you don't learn from my channel. Anyway, the mystery tool is good for pushing these out because that gets very hot. You want to remember that. So in no time, I've cranked out a few of these and we're going to put them into our cherry die. And every once in a while, we're going to shake them up. We put this out in the sun to let it brew. All right. Let's look at how we can make practical use out of uh, one of these plugs from the wood from the relic site. Um, first off, I want to show you something pretty cool here. We're going to put uh, a, one of the plugs right in here. Um, it's going to be nice that we stained it because um, it's going to contrast there. But this is going on a guitar. I think you've seen this one before. Um, look, Cedric Burnside. Um, that is R.L. Burnside's grandson. In fact, he used to play drums while R.L. was touring back in the 90s. And uh, that music in the background is Cedric Burnside, Benton County Relic. I'm going to give you a link to this below. You definitely want to get this. But anyway, this three-string coffee can has a lot of different signatures on it, starting with Tammy, um, a ton of different people. So I've been going to shellac this uh, for a while, but I'm going to want to put one of them plugs right there. So um, you see that there's a coil here that I don't want to mess up by drilling right over that. I don't want to get too close to this edge, but I want to end up about right there. So, you remember this gadget? Neck template. Um, you know, it's got three slots in there that you could use to space the, the, the string holes in the tailpiece of a three string guitar, or you could lay it up here like so. You'll see that if I lay this here, I can put my finger about where I want it, then I just lay that there, make sure it's lined up, and then I just take my pencil and mark that right there, like so. Now, what I want to do when I drill that hole right there, again, make sure it's in the middle, but I don't want to be drilling way down into there, so I want to end up about right there. Or so. so, what I've done is I've got a Forstner bit. Remember, this matches the plug cutter. So this is a quarter inch hole. Fits right down in there snug. So I've taken this Forstner bit, this quarter inch Forstner bit, and uh, measured down here like so. Just as well do that. But you can see it won't pierce down into here. So I'm going to put this on, and when that flapper hits the wood, I'll know that I'm deep enough. So 
So now I need a piece of uh, dowel that's that long. So what I've done is I've measured that like so right there and about pulled it through on a flush cut saw. So I'm going to finish making that cut like this and try not to cut anything but the dowel. There we go. Like so. Okay, now I'm just going to take a little piece of emery cloth here. Make sure the edges are knocked down. Take some white glue. Put it on the side. Everywhere in there like so. Then I'm going to take my plug and just rotate it down into there. And then I'm just going to push it down using this till it's nice and even. I don't want to set it in there too much. But if I use this, see, it's nice and flush. So I got that little dot right there. The only you and I know about what it is and why it is. I've got a few more of these soaking and they'll go in to the special guitar I'm making. All right, let's add one of our dowels uh, from the piece of relic wood onto our little collection here. Let's see how quick you are. If you're the first one that can send me an email telling me what the significance of the site we went to and who uh, this piece of wood is related to, I need a name. Um, but the bigger part of this is it's going into uh, a bunch of stuff that's going to be made to use a guitar. And it's about an individual. I'm missing one piece of something out of a place on Mono Street in Ridgecrest, California. And that's going to complete this. But let's take a quick look here. I've got... This is a death letter envelope right here. You used to get these if someone died. You could tell um, they had these black edges. Not something you'd want to find in your mailbox. I got a 1943 and a 1964 uh, date nail. They're date nails or tie nails out of a railroad tie. That's significant. I've got some New York Central. Remember my New York Central hat? Yeah. There's some New York Central related matchbooks here. Uh, see this date nail 1943. This is a New York Central system pass to ride the train for 1943. I've got an envelope from a company called Symington Gould out of Rochester, New York. And then I've got some knobs here, some volume knobs and a nickel and they have been actually in a place that's significant. They have, these have physically been in a place in New York City on McDougal Street, McDougal Street. Anyway, you can tell I'm into this stuff. It takes me a while to put my guitars together, but when I get this one built, it's going to be pretty cool. If you live anywhere near Ridgecrest, California, and you can do a little favor for me, please get a hold of me. But again, if you know who this person is that this wood and the site we visit are related to, send me an email. If you're the first one, you're going to get something pretty cool from me. All right, guys, this episode is finally at an end. I put a lot of driving and effort into filming it, and I had a really good time doing it. I hope you can see that I take my guitar seriously, and whenever possible, I like to put something uh, historic that's actually a piece of something into my guitars. This one here... Um, having that there is very meaningful along with all these signatures on here. Cedric Burnside, uh, you are the man. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk with me a little bit and sign this when you were in L.A. Um, but I'm going to shellac this up. Thanks to everybody who signed this thing. I really appreciate you all and the support you give me and my channel. So um, one more time, if you didn't catch it, Cedric Burnside, Benton County Relic. There's going to be a link below. I appreciate uh, you watching my channel, give me a like if you can, 
uh, subscribe and hit the notify button and you will be noticed when one of my exciting videos comes out. The next one, we're going to take a look at what happens when you make assumptions. You know what they say about assuming, right? See you next time.